Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service. Uh, just a quick update. Uh, things are progressing with the elevator. We've uh, been able to bust out the floor and we're getting ready to do the concrete, uh, build the shaft. Uh, things, are, things are going well. Um, as far as uh, the church itself, uh, we have a new phone number in the church and uh, I've given that out over the prayer chain and yeah, we're moving along. So uh, we'll keep you posted as things are, things are happening. So let's just open with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, as we come to you this morning and we, we, uh, we just lay this sermon in your hands, Lord, and we pray that it would do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, I lift up every person that hears it. I lift up the families and friends, Lord. I think of uh, a terrible situation at West with forest fires and, and just extreme heat, Lord. I pray that you would send rain and some cooler temperatures and uh, ease that suffering, Lord. Um, watch over our families. Watch over our friends. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the title of my sermon is Hearers and Doers, and it is from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 19 to 25. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and it says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perverses, being not here but forgetting but forgets, but doer who acts. Sorry, I got to repeat that. Being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts. He will be blessed in his doing. Amen. So, so um, we read this and, you know, be, be a doer of the word, not just a hearer of the word. And we wonder what it means to be doers of the word and not hearers. What, what, is, what is he talking about? Um, and if we tear apart the first two verses, uh, we get a good, a good idea of what he's talking about. He says, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. So I failed three in a row now. For the anger of a man does not produce the righteousness of God. So, so obviously we're trying to produce the righteousness of God here. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive the meekness, the implanted word. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. So we're, we're, we're looking at, at, at being, uh, produce the righteousness of God, and we're looking at salvation. So, so I, I, I thought about it, and I thought about what it would mean. What, what is he trying to say? And, and I just came up with this one little phrase. It means get in the game. Get involved. I remember uh, doing... Um, a uh, Bible study, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it started off and it just said, we are at war, a spiritual war. Uh, as Christians, we're at war. There has always been a spiritual war that goes on. The Bible talks about a spiritual war. Uh, you do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And so uh, we're at war. And, and I, I played football, so I always think back to football. Um, and, and I don't know if you remember when you were a kid in school and, and you would pick teams, right? and line everybody up and and pick and you never want to be the last one picked you always want to be the first one picked but anyway uh, but but you were picked you were picked by God and and you were not picked to sit in the stands and you weren't picked to sit on the bench you were picked to play you were picked to be involved in the game and I mean, if we look at Scripture and, and, and we know that Christ is coming again, and, you know, there's a lot of people that believe that this is the fourth quarter. That we're, we're coming down to the end. Um, that time is progressing where Christ will return. And, and we may not see the end of that in our lifetime while we're living here on earth. I mean, some believe we will and some believe we don't. I don't know. Um, scripture says even the Son of Man doesn't know the hour. That he'll return but we may not see it while we're on the field but but what an honor to be involved in this battle in this part of uh, the church 
this, this time in the church. And so I think he's saying we need to get involved. And if we're going to be doers of the word, then we need to look at the word and understand what the word means. Now, of course, we know that the word means the Bible, but it's, it's, it's much more than that, right? Like it, it means a whole bunch of things. We also talk about the living word. And we believe that God spoke all creation, including, uh, all creation, including life, into being. God said, and it was. God said, and it was. We believe that the Bible delivers and explains His living Word to us in many different ways. And, and, and that it, 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 it teaches us. We also believe that the Bible describes Jesus Himself as the Word. If we read in John chapter 1, verses 1-5, to 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And he's speaking about the word. In the beginning was the word. A little later in the book of John, it describes the word, the living word in a deeper way. So, so we read verses 1 to 5, but if we read verse 14 of John 1, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So, so we understand that Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the living Word in the true sense of how we understand life. So if we're going to be doers and not just hearers of the word, then we need to be doing Jesus. We, we need to be living Jesus. We need to be living like he lived and doing what he told us to do and following his commands. Matthew 4.4 4 says to us, But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So, so the word has power. The word sustains us. The, world, the word holds us up in hard times. We know that this is at the temptation of Jesus when, he's, when he's, he's being challenged by the devil just before he starts his ministry. And that's how he answers. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. So the word from the mouth of God is powerful. It, it gives us life. It sustains us. And we live by it. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, it says... That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed them. So, so it is though the spoken word we, we th it is through the spoken word that we find the ability to cast out and to heal. So through prayer, the spoken word, prayer, praying. Uh, God says, be holy for I am holy. And he told the Israelites to sanctify themselves and to set themselves apart. So the challenge for us is to be Christ-like. There are people in the Bible and people in the world today who live this, who, who, who are not just hearers, but doers. And, and they are inspirations and they are examples. But they're not the source of this holiness. They're not the source of this sanctified. Because to be sanctified is, means to be set apart, to be used by God. But holy, uh, uh, we can't get holy. Do you, do you understand that? We can't, we can't get it. We can't go, we can't buy holy. The world cannot supply holy. No human can sell holiness. God's essence is holiness. If we are to be holy, then we need to turn to God. And, and uh, I, I think of uh, Moses and the burning bush. And, and as he approaches the burning bush, God, the angel or God from the, the burning bush says to him, take off your sandals because you're standing on holy ground. Well, why is the ground holy? The ground wasn't holy before. Now all of a sudden the ground is holy. The ground is holy because God is there. God's presence is there. It's God is the source of holiness. So, so everything becomes holy as it gets closer to him. If we, if we are to be holy, then we need to turn to God. He is the only provider of holiness. And if we are doer, doers of the word, then we must turn to God in every way to be a doer of the word. We are, asked, uh, we are to ask God to supply holiness so we can live a life that would show His holiness. 
We must ask God to sanctify us. And this, this is very ironic because he tells the Israelites to sanctify themselves. When, when, when he's getting ready to, to lead the, the nation of Israel across the Jordan River, he says to Joshua, go through the camp and tell everyone to sanctify themselves. So, so to set yourself apart, to, to cleanse yourself. To, and, and so he tells us to sanctify ourselves, but we can't. We must ask him to remove the evil desires in us and surrender to that. Not, uh, nothing or no one in heaven or on earth can supply this. Only God can. So we go back to the scripture and we see very, very clear description of what Jesus wants. He says, again, he began to teach, and this is in Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. It says, again, he began to teach beside the sea. And a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into the boat and sat in the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them, saying things in parables. And his teaching, he said to them, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground and that did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. The other seed fell on good soil and produced grain growing up and increasing and yielding 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. And then he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Remember he says, he doesn't tell us not to be a hearer. He says, don't only be a hearer. So he's saying, hear, hear it. Now, we know that the, nobody understood that. The, the disciples didn't understand that. And they actually asked him, why do you have to speak to us in parables? So if we go down in the same, the same book, we started at, we finished at verse 9, we go down to verse 13, he says, And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? And then he says these words, the sower sows the word. Right? So obviously he's talking about evangelizing. He's talking about speaking the word of God to people. So he says, the sower sows the words. And these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan, Satan immediately comes and takes it away, the word that is sown in them. And there are ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then, when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And the others are the ones sown among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches and desires of other things enter in and cloak the word, and it produces un it proves unfruitful. But those who were sown on good soil are the ones who hear the word. Now, now this would be a hearer and a doer. It says, but those who hear that were sown on good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. So that's what he's challenging us to do, to be good soil. Also, when Jesus asked his disciples if they wanted to leave him, Peter described it this way in John 6, verse 68. It says, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So, I want to finish with three challenges. Let us, let us be hearers of the word. Let, let, us, let us gather together. Let, let us open God's word. Let us, let us hear messages. I know that my wife is spending a lot of time listening to podcasts. I kind of think it's because she's sick of listening to me talk, but she listens to podcasts in the car and, and when she's traveling, and, and, and she's just immersing herself in the Word. And she's hearing it. And, and, you know, we sit down and she mentions things that she's heard. She's hearing it. Let's, let's listen and let's learn from it. You know, there's a great example in the old, and I know the younger group won't know this, but those of us who grew up in the, the, the 60s, 70s, and 80s uh, would remember Charlie Brown. 
And every time the teacher spoke, it was wah, 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 wah. And why is that? Is because nobody was listening. Because nobody was hearing. It wasn't a reflection on the teacher. It was a reflection on the students. So, so let's, let's listen and let's hear. Then, let's be doers. Let, let's live the life in the example we see in Christ. Let's, let's live that way and let's follow his leading and follow his teaching. We're certainly trying to do that with this building. Us coming here was, was us trying to be doers of that, to, to, to do what we felt God was leading us to do and, and, and pull up stakes and where we were. And, and, and we're still looking at what we're going to do with that building. I know the youth are going to use it somewhat, but we're, we're starting to, to do some stuff here now. And I think this is our fourth or fifth Sunday here and things are looking well, but we're trying to be doers of the word. We're trying to reach out to people in very tangible ways, in very practical ways, but also with the Word. And that's my last challenge, because I want us to be hearers. I want us to be doers, and I want us to be sowers. I want us to be talking about the Word. Uh, I, I want us to be like, like Brenda's being to me right now when she hears something on a podcast and she thinks I need to hear it. She, she's, she's sowing seeds in me. She's telling me what she hears. Uh, let's do that. People on the street, people, people that we meet, people say, what's going on in the building? And it's a great opportunity to talk about what we're doing and, and to talk about the Word. So that's my challenge to you for this week. Let's, let's be hearers, listen and learn. Let's be doers to live and follow. And let's be sowers, speaking the words of life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for your challenge that we find in the Word, in the book of James. We, we pray, Lord, that you would help us because we know that on our own, we can't do this. But, on our, but with you, united with you and with other believers, we can be not only hearers, but also doers. Help us to be doers and help us to be sowers. Help us to be planting seeds in every encounter we have with someone. And we thank you for your blessing that we know that you will pour out on us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everybody.